Yeah. It is new product yeah. time. Buckle up, strap in. Oh wait, oh, there's a tweet. Who just tweeted? Tweet. Data fruit tweet. Okay. Thanks, Javu. I think that's what's up there. We are we are retweeted. All right. New product time. Do 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 do. New products. All right. Okay. First up on new products, we've got. Welcome to your awesome robot. This is a really good book for kids. And young reason, kids. Young, young kids. So this is basically um, take a cardboard box and make a robot. And uh, we're going to do a couple projects with this where uh, you use this at, to get started, and then you add conductive paint, you add LEDs, and then you can make your own um, robot. I think there was a, a South Park with uh, Osimo where uh, Cartman tends to be a robot, and, it was a, and he was in a uh, cardboard box. Okay. The folks out, uh, the folks in the studio audience were. The Ustream audience. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad that. Yeah. This is, this is, uh, I don't think people watch Beautifully South illustrated so much. and uh, uh, one, probably one of the more fun kind of kids. It is, it is a really fun book. Seen. And it's, um, it's really good for young kids, especially kids who are too young to solder yeah. or do electronics. Yeah. Um, this is a nice intermediary. Yeah. Way to, uh, Next up, we got another book, Hacking yeah, Electronics, yeah. an illustrated DIY guide for makers and hobbyists, hobbyists by Simon Monk. For the folks who are Adafruit fans who use the learning system, Dr. Simon Monk is one of our authors on the Adafruit learning system for Arduino and for Raspberry Pi. So if you're looking for a cool book that has a lot of electronic hacking, look no further. Simon it's Monk. It's great. I really like the color photos. Yeah, color photos is pretty rare to have in a book even at this day and age. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive because of the color photos, but the color prints yeah. are super nice. Yep. Okay, next up. Um, we've looked for um, a, uh, a container for uh, kids for Raspberry Pi projects, and we finally found one. This is a Raspberry Pi-looking bag. This is from a company called Mad Packs, and uh, when we saw it, we really liked it. It's, like, bubbly. It's actually called – it's not called a raspberry bag. It's called, like, a, like yeah. a pepper bag. But um, it's kind of kind of nice bubbly look to it, and it's kind yeah. of the right size if you just want to tote around a Raspberry Pi project. So I got a couple of them, and uh, oh yeah. they're kind of cute. A, yeah, it's perfect like, for kids. Nice it's quality a little, it's too. like a little backpack, and you can put all your Raspberry Pi stuff in it, and uh, it's, it's a lunchbox, you know, type thing. We once gave away a, a, um, a prize pack. Yeah, in that one was of these. a lot of fun. So super cool, super durable too. It's a really nice bag. So. Okay. Next up on the new product list, we've got. Cables. Cables. These are um, only available at Adafruit. These, these are, are custom cables. These are custom cables that we had made. We wanted to have GPIO cables, and I guess we could just show both, right? We yeah, we could show both. Yeah. Um, they're very similar. We're well, not the exact same thing, but they're similar. They're both the same length. Yeah. Um, so I'll show them up here because actually it's a little easier. So this is a, a basically a, a Raspberry Pi GPIO cable. It's a foot long, 12 inches, which is like 170 millimeters or something like that, I think. No, uh, 300 millimeters uh, long. And uh, it's got a tube in the middle. It's uh, got this uh, kind of heat shrinky like tube. And um, so as it's made, the, the, the ribbon cable is folded and inserted into this tube and it's shrunk to protect it. And then the nice thing is it's a lot easier to, to bend the tube in any direction you want, to twist it and to turn it and to make it go through maybe smaller areas. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, with normal ribbon cables, like, they only kind of bend in one direction. It's it's kind of hard to make it bend in another direction without without twisting it. Um, but this one is a lot more flexible because yeah. it's been coiled up. What I'm seeing out in the world is a lot of people are doing Raspberry Pi projects, and they want to put the, the, the cobbler on the other end or do something with the Raspberry Pi, and then they want to have the, you know, this, they want some distance. Yeah. So this is and why we have these custom cables. This is an extender made. cable. Yeah. This is another custom cable we had made. So this is... A cable that is basically just an extender. So if you want to connect like a like a Pi dish or like a you know a, another GPIO cable or you have something that is meant to plug into a Raspberry Pi but you don't want it to be what on the Pi, this you can plug into um, your your box and then on the other end it's a mail header. Actually, I will show this on the overhead because this is this is okay. really confusing. Okay. Really it's overhead time. Overhead time. Okay. So this cable it has this is the socket that plugs into the Raspberry Pi. And this is the um, mail connector. So this is what you would connect like a cobbler or something to. So if you had like a GPIO cable, this will plug in very nicely. Yeah. And so, you know, it's good if you have like a plate or something. Some yeah. Way. Okay. Let's keep moving along here. Next up. This is a K-Town favorite. They're oh, in yeah. Store now. LPC ex Expressos. LPCs. In the store. Yeah. So these are two 
uh, boards for um, the, the LVC Espresso series. Um, they're designed by NXP. Um, they're really low cost, which is nice. Um, they subsidize the cost of uh, these boards and they have them made by embedded artists and it's really neat. We can offer them to you at a really good price. Not only is it a breakout board for the chips themselves, but also comes with the J-Link, which is sort of this like JTAG, SWD, debugger, step debugger and programmer. Yeah. Um, there's two chips that we offer. One is the um, LPC1343, which is the next gen of the really lovely LPC1347, um, LPC which is the upgrade to the LPC1343. Uh, the really nice thing about it is the ROM USB bootloader. When you plug this in, uh, there's a ROM bootloader, so it shows up as a disk drive, and you can drag, Just drag the file right over, f uh, firmware over, firmware. and it'll burn itself, which is really neat. So you you can really like it's hard to break this thing, yeah. Um, which is really great. Uh, it has like ROM uh, USB drivers for a bunch of different things. Um, it's a 32 yeah. megahertz chip. Uh, yeah, it's got a USB client. It doesn't have USB host, but otherwise it's like super yeah. sweet. It's a really innovative feature. Imagine like microcontroller development instead of like constantly mucking around in an IDE uh, for burning the, the a new bootloader or something, you just drag a file over. Yeah, it's really nice. It's and neat. then the other one is the 1769, which is the same chip uses the embed. It's much more powerful, uh, has USB client and host. It's got like Ethernet Mac. I thought we would carry this as well in case people wanted an alternative to um, the embed. Yeah. Maybe they wanted to have something with like more of the pins brought out or they just wanted to have this... Uh, JTAG yeah, why don't you show these on the uh, overhead just to give uh, folks an idea of how big these are. Yeah. So they're they're a little bit bigger than the the normal um, I guess uh, dev platforms. You know they're they're a little longer. Yeah, they're kind of sticky. Yeah. Um, they're yeah they're gum stick like I could I guess you could say. Yeah, and this is the SWD debugger um, programmer, and then you can cut it along this line here. It's connected, but if you wanted to, you could like cut this with shears or something. And then yeah. this is a dev board, and it's got breakouts. <coughs> And then this is the LPC 1347, also with breakouts. And then this is the USB client port that you can use. So as as the kind of dev board world expands, so you've got Arduino, you've got Raspberry Pi, you've got Beagle and Black we'll be talking about in a second. And this uh, this one uh, that you just showed, uh, what would you say this one excels at? Um, well, these are people, this is best for people who need uh, high speed. So high these speed. are 72 megahertz, they're really fast. They have a lot of flash, a lot of RAM. Okay. Uh, they're, these are Arc, uh, ARM Cortex M3. Okay. What uh, application would need high speed? You know, I, I just it's just like anything where like you know something like an Arduino just isn't. You know, you don't want to run Linux. You want something low power, but you just need a little bit more oomph. It can you know it can do more audio like real time audio. Audio, real time audio too. is a good one. You can do like um, you know if you want like uh, higher speed sensor management or yeah. you want to like do Ethernet at the same time. Yeah. Something that an Arduino can't do without the help. Yeah. So if you wanted a lot of data samples <coughs> and push it out, <coughs> excuse me, over the internet, this is a good board. Yeah, some <coughs> people just like ARM. They want to use ARM yeah. instead. This we just, we just like to have a lot of options. So that's the, this is that option. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm moving right, right along. Uh, almost the stars of a show here. We're uh, we're getting close, but this is it. Uh, this was a record for us. We uh, we had a bunch of Beaglebone Blacks, uh, big sign up uh, list, and then we put them in the store, and they just instantly. Vanished. Yeah, I, I have so one. Here it is. We can show it off. Beaglebone Black. We're uh, we're getting more next week. We don't have boy, any now. Yeah, they're all gone. They we, went do fast. Have, we do have another <laughs> shipment on the way. Um, but yeah, the new Beaglebone Black is uh, an update to the old Beaglebone. Um, they took a couple things away, but they added more stuff than they took away. So the stuff that's been added now has two gigabyte of onboard EMCC flash. So that means mm -hmm. or MMC flash, which means that you, it comes. You don't need a microSD card. It comes with two gig of flash memory on board, <coughs> you plug it in, it boots Linux immediately. Okay. Um, out of the box. Out of the box. It, okay. ha but it does have a micro SD card if you wanted to have more memory or you wanted to have an internal operating, external operating system. Um, it has a USB connector still, a uh, client, USB, which I can, yeah. I can show these on the overhead. Oh, let's go to the overhead. Yeah, just to point out all these new things. It comes in a nice box. Let me open this box. Open this board. This up. So, um, this is the new black. So, yeah, it's black. So, this is the processor. This is a uh, Citara 3359. Uh, it's one gigahertz processor. Uh, I believe this is the SRAM over here. Uh, this 
is the power management chip. And then one second. Yeah. And uh, here's a. This is the, right the Ethernet there's Mac Phi. There's our cape that works on it. Um, and this is the MMC Flash, I believe. This, I don't know. This is an NXP <laughs> chip. I don't know exactly what that is. I have to look up with the, uh, the data sheet. There's still that reset button. There's still one USB port. Um, there's still a nice 5 volt power plug that goes into the memory ma uh, the power management chip. There's Ethernet, and Ethernet has um, the power uh, yeah. the uh, link and activity lights built into them. You can kind of see them here. Um, there is this mini USB connector, and the mini USB connector d no longer does uh, USB to serial. So instead, uh. Uh, yeah, they took that out, and instead there is a header here for connecting. Um, uh, connecting it FTDI oh, I see, or yeah. USB to serial connection. So our console cable works with yeah, it. Yeah, you use a console cable, but yeah, you can yeah. see that there's a six-pin header there, so you can use that. Um, there's the micro SD connector still, but you don't need it. It doesn't come with a micro SD card as well. The passives on the back, and then uh, one of the really exciting things is it has a new micro HDMI connector on it. Yeah, micro HDMI. Micro HDMI. Okay. So, let's see if we can get it to focus. It's hard to see because it's just a little square. Yeah. But yeah, that's a it's micro HDMI. So it it's looks like, like a, a USB, but it's not. It's a, it does look like a USB, but it is, um, it's not. Yeah, it's for, um, if you have a, we have micro HDMI to HDMI cables. It's basically what you find on a phone or camera. You know, yeah. They don't have enough space for a big HDMI connector. So instead they have the micro HDMI. Okay. So it's, it's very fast. Um, it's got like 5, 12 megabytes of RAM. It's got this onboard flash. It's yeah. got a lot of stuff built in. It has a lot of GPIO connectors. Um, how's it compared to a Raspberry Pi? Well, it's um, it has a couple of extra things, but also doesn't have some things. So one thing that it does have it has uh, built-in analog digital converters. It has yeah. more GPIO. <laughs> has built-in flash. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have two USB ports. Only has one. Yeah. That's ten bucks more. Ten bucks more. Um, it has the micro HDMI, which you know, has the um, Raspberry Pi has HDMI has a standard size yeah, HDMI yeah, slot. Yeah. It doesn't have a video analog out. output yeah. or analog video output. It doesn't have composite yeah. output, and it doesn't have um, an analog output. There's there's audio output through the HDMI slot. Yeah. But you need to, to convert it. It's, That's pretty rough. Yeah, yeah, it's not like you can't just plug in some speakers. Um, although there's, I believe there's an I2S port on here, so you yeah. could make a codec. But yeah, it's basically like there's just no slot. Yeah. Um, uh, what else is it? it it's uh, it does come with Linux built in, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have the number of tutorials and support that the Raspberry Pi does. Yeah. There's a lot of projects and tutorials out there for the Raspberry Pi. Chances are, if you want to do something, it's been done, it's documented. Yeah. With this, it's a little bit tougher. Yeah. So that's it. Um, uh. We're testing stuff out. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, plans for all of our platforms that we have uh, in the store. Yeah. And this is a new one, and uh, we're going to see what type of uh, things the community wants, what type of things the customer wants. Yeah. And uh, we'll, um, you know, keep posting up stuff. Yeah. And if you we got them on Friday. Yeah, if you signed so. up and you didn't get one, just sign up again, and we'll have some soon. Yeah, we will get some okay. more on Wednesday. And we'll next get, up. We, we, big we fill. Uh, we got to go through the next okay. two kind of fast, Lady Ada, with this one. Yeah, sure. So this is the new video scope. This is a big deal. Yes. Let me get this set up over and here. And we use this for optical inspection for our own stuff here at Adafruit. I got it for myself. Yeah. And, and I was like, uh, oh, I should probably also have it for... Uh, it has some really handy features, so you want to okay. go over that. So yeah, here is... I'll try to get this all in here at once. So this is the, the scope here. I can kind of see it. This yeah. is the body of the scope. And I have it on a, a stand, although I can remove it from the stand. Yeah, so you could see uh, Lady is moving it around. Yeah. And then when you get it focused on a specific thing, you can press the button and it'll freeze frame. Yeah. So I'm you can do... I'm trying to get this set up. Okay, so there yeah. you go. So the nice thing about this is um, it's connected just directly via um, a composite video connection to the screen. Um, and you can focus in and out. I do suggest using a stand because it's yeah. hard to focus on something. And even over readily. video with video, you could tell it's a, a really beautiful uh, picture. Yeah, and then um, it does two magnification rates. So this is, um, you know, you can take a look at this board. I can do inspection on it. We use it for video inspection. And then if you want to really take a look, you can um, focus in a lot. And oh, wow. And you can do 400 times magnification. Look at that. So it's like it's so magnified. It's actually kind of hard to see like where the heck yeah. I am. 
See, there's a via. Okay, so there's... Oh, wow. So you can see the chip. No, you just right, right where you're hold at. Hold on, hold on. Okay, oh, look at that. So I can actually look at um, the chip die of the sensor. It's kind of hard to see because it's a video, a video, a video. Yeah. But you can see some bond wires. And uh, I can see, actually, the um, the die itself, and I can see the sensor element. Yeah. It's a little tough to see over the video, video. But you can sort of see it a little bit. Um, so you can do, like, in-depth inspection. But what I think is really good for is you can have it a couple of inches away and, um, you know, some people who want to solder um, more easily, you can have a soldering iron in there and you can actually solder uh, live while inspecting. So you can have, like, a nice 7-inch yeah. display. Yeah. And can you do a freeze frame just so folks oh, yeah. can see? So uh, Let me so, actually zoom in. Yeah, zoom in really far into the – this is a color sensor, um, and that chip is uh, – Really just impressive. We're going to talk about to, that in a second. Have to find out where it is. There okay. it is. So hold on. Yeah. Let me zoom. Out. And then you're almost there. I know. It's, it's tougher than it looks. And then if you press the Bonk. button, it freeze frames. Yeah, frame. so now it's freeze frames. So now I can, so now I can move it, and it's, it's frozen, so you can um, see it. And when you press the button, it unfreeze frames again. Yeah. So I think that's actually really handy. Some of the other uh, microscopes we got didn't do that. So yeah, yeah this is microscope and you can adjust the uh, light levels this is the freeze frame and this is the focus so it's it's a pretty basic um, microscope but I like that it's it's just audio uh, so video out and we connected it up to our um, 7 inch TFT display and uh, well okay. and put it into um, oh, I unplugged it and put it into a 4 by 3 um, aspect ratio okay and it just worked let's move we only got a few minutes Sorry, so we sorry, got to move, yeah. move, move all right next up this is a big deal the best case in the world Hi is case. finally here. We spent uh, almost a year on this, and this is an injection molded case designed for Adafruit in North America by Mike Dole. He does our eye necklace and eye cufflinks. Uh, Mike is a close friend of ours, and uh, it is what we think is the most uh, beautiful case, this, the thing that you want to actually uh, share and show um, a Raspberry Pi on your desk. Okay. So here's the uh, overhead. Okay, <clears throat> so I can give a quick tour of it. So we wanted to make a case that was really durable and that people could like toss in their bag and have on their desk and not be worried about spilling something on it or getting the pie dirty. So it's very protective. That was like our goal with this case. So it has a nice clear top so you can see everything that's going on inside. You can see LEDs and it's like a really nice polished top. So it's like you can barely even tell it's, it's on. Um, the case is really simple. This just snaps off. I can never snap things off in front because I'm afraid I'm going to whack the camera. But um, this, the top comes off pretty easily if you're not doing it at arm's length. And then the Raspberry Pi actually, it press fits in really nicely. So we worked really hard and it kind of does a little bit of a, a, a press fit snap and then you know it, it won't fall off. So you can use this yeah. as, a, as a protective um, base. So if you want to just have it on your desk and plug stuff in and like, Connect cameras and displays and do things. Yeah, it's almost like a little tray. It's a little tray, and it's and it's nice and protective. Um, and because it's a press fit, it works with the Model A or B. Oh, and and does it have a, a place for the GPIO to go out the side? Yeah. Oh no, my gosh, it does. It does, and you can actually um, have it the GPIO plug in and then remove or replace the top and not have to unplug the uh, GPIO cable, which is um, our Pi box. You do it kind of slots in in a certain way, so you have to sort of disassemble it to remove the GPIO cable. With this one. Um, it's a lot easier to do so. Um, I'm trying to think what else. It uh, has a slot in the bottom for the SD card. Yeah. Um, it's durable. We might have other colors. Right now we have black and clear. Yep. Um, what else did we do with this case? It's been a long time. Well, the, the most important thing with the case is we wanted something that kids could put the pie in and just toss in their uh, uh, book bag and yeah. it would be uh, sturdy and durable. We wanted something clear that was we uh, also gorgeous. We also made, made the base, it kind of it um, kind of has a little bit of a plateau yeah, shape. Uh, yeah, so it will, um, when you have it on your desk, it won't slip around. We wanted to make something that, you know, you can have a lot of cables connected and it would have um, a good stable base. Yeah. So that's what, one of the things we really like about this case as well. Okay, and then we gotta do one last product and then we're running out of time. Okay. A lot of stuff this week. Okay, color sensor. Yay! The best color sensor, we think, out there. And we wanted to kind of end the new products with this uh, today. Um, here's a uh, picture of the color sensor. And when you put an orange on top of it, um, the little LED that's controlled, getting its sensor yeah, information through Arduino. Yeah, it's a very Arduino, basic little demo, but I have to orange. A, a, a resistor, so, so I'll, let's I'll go show to the it. overhead. Oh, wait. Oops. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Okay. 
So see if the colors will show up. So this is the sensor, and there's a white LED. And the reason there's a white LED... No, it's flesh tone. <laughs> yeah, it's just flesh yeah. tone. Um, the LED is what illuminates it because the sensor has to have light bouncing off of whatever it's looking at, just like our eyes do, we need to see yeah. photons. So for example... Um, oh, look at that. And I have like a piece of paper here, which is green. green. Yeah. Um, I have a purple PCB. Yeah. It's just a little tougher to get the. Yeah, and it, it, and it, what's neat is like uh, there's like you know it's bluish as you get closer, and it gets a little bit more purple there's as you get purple. as you get closer. Yeah, the purple doesn't show up on the camera as well. Yeah. And then, Maybe uh, there's a yellow handled. Uh, yeah, thing. Let's see if that how that works out. Yeah. Very neat. Yellow. Um. So the the LED is not a, a great. Um, oh, you know what? Here's some. Let me grab these plushies. These would be really good for demo. So. Um, oh look at that. Sorry. <laughs> so there's a uh, red, ruby, yeah. and then blue. Hold on, there you go. Yeah. Blue for Billy, and then I can't quite reach any other ones. But basically, yeah, we you know it works with all these colors. It's a full RGB sensor. Um, uh, we have some code written. It can do like lux calculations. It can do color temperature calculations. Um, but it's also excellent for uh, color sensing. Uh, yeah. It can do like red, green, blue, and clear. So you tell you the brightness, and there's like all this crazy sensitivity, and you can change the range, and uh, it has an IR filter on it, which is really nice. So the colors that it sees is actually rep very similar to the colors that uh, we see as humans. It doesn't get affected by IR. A lot of uh, low-cost color sensors don't have IR filtering. How so, small of an area can it detect color, like color of a resistor band? Uh, the, the, you can look in the data sheet of the sensor to see how big the color sensor square is, but yeah. I'd say like it has to be at least like two or three millimeters by two or three millimeters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was new products.